Hello, welcome to Switch on Gaming. Paul speaking. Welcome to a little look at a new game that's coming out on the Nintendo Switch. This is Rustler, and it actually describes itself as Grand Theft Horse. Uh, it's a kind of old school Grand Theft Auto game, like the top down ones, but set in a medieval world. And uh, this was just brilliant for me. I'm going to probably put the whole video of this at the end of uh, my content here. So if you want to watch the whole thing, stick around to the end. But it is really funny. It's a really clever video. And uh, so it was a really nice surprise to boot the game up and uh, get this like live action intro. Really funny. Um, so yeah, this is a uh, Grand Theft Auto game. Comes from Modus Games. And is going to set you back the princely sum of... $29.99 in America and $24.99 I think in the UK. So sort of a middle price of indie game. I'm going to show you some of the gameplay. Played around about uh, five hours of this one so far. Again, it was one of these big games that's, you know, obviously got a lot of content, but got the code, you know, only literally a couple of days ago. So makes it really hard to put in a serious amount of time. But... All I'll do is I'll just play for it, point out the the things I like so far, the things I don't like so much, and then uh, hopefully can um, help you make a decision. So, as I say, top down, Grand Theft Auto game. First impressions are really good, apart from that intro, uh, which is excellent. The rest of the presentation is really good in terms of graphics um, and, and music and stuff. We'll talk about the music a little bit in a second, but... Graphics generally are brilliant. You've got these like medieval towns absolutely bristling with detail. Um, you can just see so much stuff. And uh, if you don't mind the language there, some like graffiti. But there's all sort of little touches like this. Um, sound is provided by your bard. And uh, you'll find them sort of sitting around the streets like this one here. So this kind of provides a soundtrack. And you can actually punch the bard in the face. <laughs> To change the track. I'm just trying to get him to do... He does some like beatboxing. <laughs> well, we'll get to that a little bit later maybe. But um, yeah, so they're kind of like these little modern riffs. But sung by a bard with like a lute. Um, I don't know if it works 100%. And again, they kind of only show up in certain areas, so it's not like a constant soundtrack. But then again, on Grand Theft Auto, you know, the music generally only plays when you're in a car. Um, so we've got a traditional map. You can see here this starting area. Um, the idea is to uh, get across this bridge. The whole idea of the game has actually got a overarching story. And that's you need to get to the, uh, the Great Tournament, where if you win the Great Tournament, you will get to uh, win the princess as a bride. And basically, you've got to raise your nobility enough to be allowed to cross this bridge and enter the Grand Tournament. And you do that in a variety of ways. Basically, sandboxy, whichever way you want to do it. Play it straight, do the quests. Uh, you know, go around killing people, become notorious, find treasure. Uh, you know, there's lots of different ways to do it. So, first thing, we'll kind of try and grab a quest here. We've got, uh, where are we on the map? One of the small little gripes is sometimes it's hard to see where you are, but where this red arrow here so if we keep walking this way around the corner I've got a run button here just to speed things up actually while we're talking about the run button and speeding things up one of the uh, little niggles i got with this game is it's really hard to find a horse like once you lose your horse you can just grab one now and stop trying to get on that horse um once you lose your starting horse on the map somewhere there's no sort of indicator to show where it is so it's really difficult to go and retrieve your original horse. So then it leaves you to stealing other horses. Again, a trait of Grand Theft Auto. Uh, you know, just jump in any car that passes. But, you know, I don't know. kind of feel like you should have a bond with your starting horse. And uh, you should just have that available at all times. I like the sort of games where you can, um, you know, whistle. And basically your horse trots up behind you. So you've always got it to hand. Let's have a look at this mission here. Wine and Blood. Get a little bit of text there's no real speech in the game it's like gobbledygook mumbling <laughs> so 
So, take the cart to the store. So, we've got this cart here. Press X to get on to horses and stuff. A little bit hard to control. And this, uh, again, leads me very nicely into another little fault I've got. There are a few bugs in the game. And most notably, I found I was getting stuck on scenery. Especially with my horse. A hell of a lot. So, you get trapped behind a barrel. Uh, you, know, you get stuck. You can't do much. And these are a little bit hard to control. But yeah, once you get stuck in a barrel, I mean, I was literally completely stuck at one point, And the only way I could get my horse out of there was to get off my horse and smash the barrels to pieces to free uh, my horse. So that was a little bit annoying. These direction arrows aren't particularly great either. They'll point as the crow flies to, uh, to where the mission is. But uh, like you see here, we have to go out of the main gates of the main castle area here. But it's fine. I love all these like distant screams that you can hear from people. It's like just horrible haunting screams and like torture and stuff. Uh, humankind's greatest lies. Stop the conspiracy. The earth is round. <laughs> as you'd expect in this sort of game, there's lots of little uh, hidden secrets and little things that you can do as well. There's little collectibles to find, like little musical notes and horses' hooves as like little collectibles. I don't know where I meant to begin with this car. Let's go and see if I can speak to anyone. Oh no, go back to the car. So I can't actually get through here. I don't think. You can't rotate the camera around either, so again, we're kind of stuck here. You can press the uh, R button to reverse a horse. But you can see it's quite, quite fiddly. There we go. So we need to find a way. Oh, let's see. This is me trying to get out of there. There we go. And that's say so that's not indicative. That just goes to show what I was saying earlier. You know, you can get stuck on the scenery quite a lot so we need to come around this way to do this mission leave the car in the stores area it's cool you get these little parking signs and you know it is really tongue-in-cheek oh well it's kind of parked steal the car with the wine oh great so we're drawing some attention to ourselves now I'll go through the weapons in a second as well once we get a clearing, but there's a, a variety of weapons that you can collect. Get... And away we go. Uh, so I assume we're taking this back to the castle. So we took a cart of water and we're bringing back a cart of wine. Very religious connotations. Oh. Absolutely murdering people. Some like stuff's really funny. Like if you get caught uh, doing a bad deed, the police horses will chase you, and they're like flashing blue and red lights and stuff. So it's quite cool. Uh, wait, those are not wine. Those are bag of potatoes. You took the wrong wagon. God is compassionate and gracious. So am I. Get back there and get me the correct wagon. It's the one with the red barrels. Okay. So again, I found found that there's a, quite a few little things like this, like just extension of, of content really so you know we had to go drop this off pick up the wagon bring it all the way back and then get told it's the wrong wagon so you basically have to repeat the mission which is just to me such a cheap way of you know padding out content a little bit so but i don't i mean i'm probably sounding like a pretty negative impression of the game so far which i don't necessarily want it to be because I have had a lot of fun playing this in terms of gameplay has been fun but also I just had fun it's it's a really fun game and the wrong way it's, it's a really fun game and it's a really if you played the original Grand Theft Auto games like the top down ones like Grand Theft Auto London and the first couple of, of GTA games 
you know, you can see a lot of that influence coming through, and it just brings a smile to your face, like, um, in terms of like the parodies and, and cliches and stuff. That sort of thing's been really enjoyable. Is the uh, bard beatboxing? For reasons, um, you can run with a horse holding down the L button. We'll just complete this mission and uh, we'll get some XP. So then I can show you the skill tree, and then we'll have a look at some weapons, some of the other missions, and talk a little bit more on my final thoughts on the game. But uh, leave me a comment below. It's, I think this is a, a probably top end pricing. For an indie game of this nature, I mean, I have to be fair. <laughs> Did a bit of goods to his residence. Uh, yeah, there was a similar sort of uh, old school Grand Theft Auto type game uh, called American Fugitive that I reviewed on the channel, and it kind of blew up that video. So if you haven't seen that yet, then check that out. But it's a similar top down game, and I. I think I reviewed it quite well. I think I gave it a 7. But I've got quite a lot of stick for uh, people thinking it should have been rated higher. But I, I found it fair. It had quite a lot of uh, performance issues, especially early on. It's been patched a hell of a lot since then. But this kind of reminds me of this. You know, there is performance issues here. As I get trapped in the corner. I missed the exit. Um, there is performance issues. There is some slowdown. Not massive amounts. It's not particularly game spoiling. But again, I can't point the finger at, at one similar game and um, you know give the other one a free ride or such so yes there is some performance issues hopefully the, the guys can patch it out to be a little bit smoother but I think when you look at what's going on the amount of uh, detail and stuff in the world I think you'd probably say fair enough to a degree it's a really nice looking game there's a lot of time and effort gone into it so You have to take that into consideration. So working our way back to the priest's residence over here, and hopefully this will be the end of the mission. Again, a bit of uh, mission padding going on. Can we get in there? The uh, the dialogue in here as well is also really cool. It's like very good humour. Oh. Nobody <laughs> expects the Spanish Inquisition. It's got a nice monkey python with it, sir. Okay, they run away. 30 silvers. Yeah, we'll take it. And then you get these like, weird bits of music here, like this little interlude when you finish a mission, which is like literally could be lifted straight out of GTA. Sort of like a bit of a hip hop rap sort of interlude. So really mixed kind of um, presentation. But anyway, all part of the charm. So let's have a look at what weapons we've got. We top left hand corner use the uh, R and L, you know, right and left on the D-pad. Got crossbow. Uh, with the crossbow, you can aim it with the right stick. And then left stick to fire, and it takes a little while to uh, reload that, but it's a, pretty much a one-hit kill. We've got this kind of, I don't know what you call it, it's a pole axe, maybe? Great for distance, and you've got strong and light attacks as well. Um, fists with a shield, sword and shield, and again, right stick to aim uh, your character, and then back to the crossbow. Um, you can buy more weapons at the castle. You've got gold. Um, but you know what I mean? Like like I was saying earlier about horse, we've kind of done this mission here. We're kind of dumped in the middle of nowhere a little bit. And there's no horse. I'll take the whole shoot to get skill points. I'm going to show you the skill points in a second. And you can usually smash these crates up. For rewards, we've already got a stick, so we can't get a stick. If you go into the water as well, it's almost an instant death as well, which is a little bit weird. You feel like you'd need some sort of um, 
time to breathe. And again, it sounds like I'm nitpicking at this game, and I, and I don't mean to be. I'm probably, if I am nitpicking, it's probably because I see the potential in it, and, I, and I've enjoyed it. So there's just these little niggles that I think could be better. We'll go back to our house. See, we're miles away from anywhere. Just always feels to me, like in the old school Grand Theft Auto games, that you would... Um, Oh, we can be you know, you could pretty much walk out into any street and pick up a car almost instantly. But here, probably, if I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, maybe in keeping with the time, you know, it's not going to be packed streets full of horses and carts and stuff. But, I don't know. Just makes the game a little bit more of a drag, a little bit less fun. The fact you've got a run around everywhere and you've got you know a stamina meter in the top left as well so you know you can't just run around full tilt you have to uh, manage your stamina but again nitpicks so let's have a look at the uh, skill system press the pause button i'd rather it wasn't under the pause button here because he kind of skills is just kind of lumped in as like a one of the main menu options which is a little bit weird um so we've got combat ranged riding and social and each of these can be upgraded a few times. So you can like, unlock a new skill and then you see the dots underneath. You can upgrade it a few times. And you can reset all your skills for 100 gold. We've got three skill points available on the left hand, uh, right hand side there. And you can see how much upgrade costs. So um, you can actually speed up, I think. Where's the speed one? Uh, riding. I'm sure there's one that made you walk faster. Yes, I dreamt it wish that it was in uh, maybe not so what should we take uh, uh, uh. again there isn't you know a, a massive amount of skill either so Crossbow reloads 10% faster. Go on, we'll have that. That'll do. Um, yeah, it's not a massive amount of skills. And, and again, it feels like um, padding that you unlock the skill but then can upgrade it a few times. And I'd rather, instead of being able to upgrade one skill three times, I would rather there be three skills, if you know what I mean. Three different sorts of skills that you could build up. I mean, it's just, you know, there's not a great deal there what is there one two there's 20 skills that you can unlock you know i'd rather there was a, a a bigger and more interesting skill tree rather than being able to upgrade a single skill a few times but there you go uh there was some hidden treasure out in this area but i just want to head back to the main village so if we hot foot it across hot foot it across these this forest and again, you kind of a little bit of a problem. There's nobody about. There's no horses. Oh, there's someone fishing. You know, there's nobody about to interact with. There is some side missions, but you know, you've kind of really got a hunt for them. But there's not masses to do. There is this sort of uh, side mission when you get back to the village that you can plow a field to get money. But. I don't know if the, the balancing is off or it's just because it's early on in the game, reasonably early on, but I've never really found out that I'm short of money. So, again, the incentive to plough a field is, is not massive for me at the moment, but basically you can get on this horsey, horsey plough thing. I think that's what they call it, technically. Horsey, horsey plough thing. Uh, I press Y and you can just plough this field. And every uh, you know, every few seconds you get some gold. But you know, you're adding one gold there. I've got 616, so adding one gold every five seconds to that isn't particularly interesting. I don't know quite why you'd need to do that. But there you go. You can do that as a side quest. I, I hope there's more. I assume and hope there's more. So, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Um, so, I mean, that is Rustler. Again, it's... Uh, sounds a bit 
have a negative one. I don't need to be because I've enjoyed it. And if you, you know, if you enjoy these top-down Grand Theft Auto games, then you know your mileage may vary here. Um, I've had fun playing it so far. Definitely, I've enjoyed it, but it has got a few niggles that, you know, hopefully could be patched out. I don't think there's anything here that's can't be saved and and made better, but. Um, that's just my feelings of it so far. Drop me a comment below. Let me know what you think of the look of this one. If you've uh, got it pre or picking it up. I think there's a physical version coming out as well. Uh, also, I'm pretty sure it's releasing on other platforms. We're just going to steal this horse. Thank you very much, Warhoo. And have a little trot around. So, again, maybe it's just my uh, little bit of a lack of patience. Barrels are appearing and disappearing as I <laughs> without a range. Oh. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think um, on this one. Leave me a comment below. Leave me a like if you enjoyed the video, and please subscribe if you're new. If you've got any questions on the game at all that I haven't specifically covered, then uh, again, let me know below, and I will try and find that out for you. But until then, just want to say thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you all again next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye bye.